Hello again, I am Blunty. Now, GTC has just come and gone the NVIDIA GPU Technology Conference, and before the event happened, I had expressed my hopes, my desires, that NVIDIA would use the opportunity to announce the next line of GPUs for gamers, the GeForce line, based on the Pascal architecture, which we know has been coming. They didn't do that. What they did do was announce the world's most powerful data center GPU, the Tesla P100, which is not for gamers, it's for data centers, so it's for doing machine learning, for doing science stuff not for playing Rise of the Tomb Raider. And I will admit to feeling a little bit disappointed that we weren't introduced to the new line of GeForce cards. I mean, that will come, and it will probably come quite soon, actually. But now that we have a Pascal-based GPU out in the wild, basically, it's in mass manufacture right now, we can use it as a frame of reference to talk about what's coming in the consumer-level line of gamer graphics card, the GeForce line. So, let's have a chat about it. At the GTC keynote last week, NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang detailed the result of the 2 to $3 billion worth of research and development they spent to produce the so-called five miracles that made the huge leap forward to Pascal possible and announced the Tesla P100. Now, honestly speaking, calling technological advancements miracles sticks in my craw a bit as it somehow devalues the hard work, ingenuity and flat out genius of the engineers and related fantastically clever nerds who worked so hard to invent this stuff in the first place. Writing them down to merely magical miracles seems a bit, well, a bit dismissive, really, doesn't it? But let's move past the marketing speak, because that's all it is, it's just a bit of marketing. But these so-called miracles are in fact very significant. The first is the new architecture, codenamed Pascal, which they used to build a chip with 15 billion transistors on it, making it the largest chip ever. The previous chip, the Maxwell-based GX200, which I happen to have an example of here that they let me walk away from the labs with, believe it or not. This is the chip that sits at the heart of uh, like the Titan X. It has a comparatively small 7 billion transistors. Just 7 billion. Eh, it's nothing. And when you add in the transistors for the HPM2 memory, the Pascal module comes all the way up to a brain-melting 150 billion transistors. <laughs> the first miracle is they got this to work at all, apparently. It has taken five years between Maxwell and Pascal, which I think I'm right in saying is the longest time NVIDIA has ever taken between architecture upgrades. The amount of work and development ploughed into this chip is truly mind-boggling. It is the largest FinFET chip ever made, 600 millimeters squared, and if you don't know what FinFET is or means, it's very basically just a way of stacking transistors up in a 3D manner within the chip instead of having everything laid out flat next to each other. It helps sidestep many of the physical and performance issues that come with making the individual transistors smaller and smaller and smaller and allow them to run at lower power and much more efficiently. It's also integrated with HPM2, the fastest memory that has ever been made, and it's linked with the GPU core with massive amounts of bandwidth to make moving all that information in and out of memory crazy fast. In fact, NVIDIA had to invent a new kind of interlink, they're calling NVLink, just to feed these crazy speeds at maximum potential. And while the original HBM standard, which we've started to see elsewhere in the world in use, can't actually do better than a mere 4 gigabytes of space, the HBM2 memory NVIDIA waited for can pump up to 32 gigabytes. Now, when it comes to the GeForce series of consumer and gamer cards, the ones that you and I are probably interested in, 32 gigabytes is obviously a bit wild overkill at this stage, so I'd expect to see 8 gigabytes and maybe even 16 gigabyte configurations hit the market. Amounts of memory which, when combined with the much faster speeds, should keep gamers very happy indeed for quite some time yet, and provide lovely headroom for the more taxing 4K and virtual reality gaming. Now, many expect that only the very top-end models of the GeForce series carrying Pascal chips will retain the HBM2 memory of the P100, and instead, the more affordable mid- and lower-end models may very well feature more traditional and cheaper to manufacture DDR5-type memory, but... There is also the GDR5X standard, which offers double the bandwidth compared to current-gen GDR5 without incurring the design and manufacturer changes that HBM2 needs. We'll just have to wait and see what happens on that score, but my guess is that the lower and middle-end cards will have a tasty supply of DDR5X, and the 980 Ti and Titan equivalents for higher-end enthusiasts will be boasting the HBM2 memory. 
To try and boil all of this down into some sort of perspective, all of this means we're facing an extremely rare occurrence where gamers see a card with a holy trinity of technological leaps forward, shrinking the chip tet to 16 nanometer FinFET technology and a very significant architectural change and the leap to HBM2. Usually these kinds of things bleed out slowly in a gradual walk forward year over year, but this year it's a true leap forward. And what all this means for gaming in the real world beyond benchmarks and such is of course yet to be seen, but all of these numbers stacking up together do tend to make one quite optimistic for the world of traditional PC gaming and of course making keeping up with the evolution of VR a much less stressful concept. As you regulars already know, NVIDIA themselves sent me up to Silicon Valley to check out all the new stuff at the GTC, and as such, I was often in the company of NVIDIA employees. I even got a tour of their campus and a couple of their working labs. Fascinating stuff, there'll be more videos on those, but point is, at every turn, at every opportunity, I was asking anybody I could about the GeForce-faced future of the Pascal architecture. And while a couple of the lab guys let slip some fun information the day before the P100 announcement, and I do hope they didn't get into any trouble for that. <laughs> Not a single NVIDIA woman or man would do anything but smirk at me when I asked for even the tiniest sliver of information about the GeForce family going forward. Which is no great shock, we'll have to admit, but it was worth trying, wasn't it? What I personally expect, though, is an announcement that will be made at Computex, the Taipei-based technology and PC expo held yearly, and this year falls from May 31st to June 4th. I'm expecting at least a 980 Ti level card announcement. That means the top end of the gamer-focused line. I'm expecting it'll ship with 8GB of HBM2 memory, while a Titan level card will come later on with probably 16GB. I doubt we'll see the crazy max out of 32GB on anything within the first year or so at least. But a high-end enthusiast 980 Ti level card with 8GB of HBM2 does seem to make sense as a way to plant the first flagship for the GeForce Pascal line. And performance-wise, I'd expect it to outperform the current 980 Ti by somewhere in the order of 50 to 70% faster in most gaming benchmarks. Secondarily, we may even see a GTX 970 level card announced, this one humming along on the Pascal chip of course, but with the more affordable GDDR5X memory on board. Again, I'd expect at least 8GB, but perhaps 6GB to keep the 980 Ti equivalent with a numbers on paper comparison gap, just in case people don't quite understand the real world difference between GDDR5X and HBM2. 8 being bigger than 6 being as far as their minds can stretch on that concept. And don't forget, with all the new tech in play, these cards will also be using less power, it will run cooler, and therefore quieter, and it will probably be surprisingly small too, given the space efficiency of how the HBM2 memory is integrated. I have no clue what the naming convention they'll use will be, I'm quite sure they won't be calling it the GTX 1080 though, which is the next logical numerical step forward from the 900 series of course. But 1080 does bring to mind the standard HD resolution, doesn't it? Which I don't think is ideal from a marketing standpoint for a series of cards this powerful, and we've already started moving up and away from a mere 1080p gameplay with the 900 series already. Personally, I kind of like the idea of resetting the count, going with entirely new branding. I mean, with the new die size, the new architecture, and the new memory technology, if ever there was a time to break with the existing numerical naming convention, it's got to be now, doesn't it? How does NVIDIA GeForce K1000 series sound? We're moving into describing resolutions with Ks these days anyway, 2K, 4K, 8K. I feel like it makes some amount of sense to fold that into the branding of these cards, which will be gaming at 2K and 4K and such. So maybe we'll see the K1000, the K1050, the K1060, the K1070, and the K1080. Then again, maybe not. That does sound a bit odd, doesn't it? I don't know. Maybe it's one of those things we'll just get used to. Have you got any better ideas? Let me know in the comments down below. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time. We are in production now. We'll ship it soon.